And I'm happy to introduce the first uh, speakers. We have Jennings Anderson, a research scientist at Meta, and also um, Timera Whaley, that is a quality analyst at Meta. They will give us the very first presentation of the day on increasing OpenStreetMap data accessibility with a new distribution of OpenStreetMap data. The floor is yours, and uh, yeah, enjoy the academic track. Hello, everyone. My name is Timura Whaley Omidiri, and uh, I'm Jennings, Jennings Anderson. Uh, together, our conversation is on increasing OpenStreetMap data accessibility with the Analysis Ready Daylight OSM distribution. And in today's presentation, we'll also provide a demonstration of a cloud based assessment of global building completeness. So, the first question what is daylight? Uh, daylight is a geospatial data set that is made of OpenStreetMap data. This data is validated by our awesome Mobius team to be accurate, recent, and vandalism free. Daylight is also published alongside other uh, data sets such as Microsoft Buildings and Experimental ML Roads. So what does the daylight process uh, look like? Well, it's a four week find six import loop where first we take a snapshot of OpenStreetMap and in the snapshot we first find or discover errors or other issues anywhere on the map. We then submit these fixes directly into OSM, so not an internal database, but they happen on live OSM. And then these fixes are imported into our daylight map. For example, um, here is a building relation in Malaysia. This building is on my right. So the geometric roof of the building was not rendering properly on OSM. And so on my left, um, a sub part of the Mobius team applied some fixes to this relation by adding tags to each individual way and also dissolving some parts of the relation so that it could render properly on the OSM map. So now let's talk about the history of daylight. In 2018 and 2019, the first initial ideas and conversations specifically at State of the Map uh, were happening around uh, quality of OSM data. By 2020, a sneak preview of Daylight was released. In 2021, the very first uh, version of Daylight was released publicly as a public commitment uh, to releasing Daylight. In 2022, Daylight is now published on the AWS Registry of Open Data as PBF and Analysis Ready Parquet Files. Currently, we are at version 1.16 of Daylight, and we're growing. At the end of the month, we'll have version 1.17. However, in terms of version 1.16, there are 517 million buildings, 78 million kilometers of roads and paths, and all of this data is from OpenStreetMap. Um, another example here, we have a relation, a beach relation in Bali, Indonesia, where the sandy part of the beach was not rendering properly on the map and our team submitted fixes so that it could render properly. So the analysis ready daylight open street map distribution is what I'd like to talk to, uh, talk to you about today. Um, this is a version of daylight that we take and do some extra processing to, to hopefully make it easier for uh, researchers and data analysts looking to work with OpenStreetMap data. So I think a lot of us are pretty used to kind of this, this pipeline, I tried to generalize this as much as I could here, where you're looking to analyze some OSM data, you're going to start by obtaining it. You're going to download the, the PBF, the Planet PBF, uh, use tools like Overpass, OSM Galaxy, Hot Export Tool, geofabric extracts, um, if you're looking for history data, the OSHDB. Um, and then uh, if you want to do some sort of pre-processing, typically there's, um, you can do some, you, have, you know, use the Osmium tool or something like that to, to process this data while it's still as a, a PBF. Um, but ultimately you're going to have to do this conversion and this might not happen, um, you might not be doing this directly. Uh, usually an import tool is going to run something like this in the background, but this is something that's going to turn our OSM data, our nodes, ways, and relations into points, lines, polygons, something that geospatial analysis tools are uh, used to, to dealing with. 
And then finally, we're going to import that data uh, into a tool that we want to use, whether that's going to be QGIS, notebooks, um, visualization tools, or uh, whatever, whatever your preferred stack is. So this is kind of, a, I think, the, the most generic version of this kind of OSM data, uh, data science pipeline. And this is what the daylight analysis ready distribution is trying to do. Uh, we want to get to a point where you can write a query, obtain data, and just put it right into those tools. Let's talk about how we're going to do that. We take our monthly daylight distributions, and then per uh, feature, we're going to calculate some extra attributes that we think are useful for uh, researchers. So uh, this first, what we're going to talk about today is what we call the, the OSM features uh, analysis ready parquet file. So we take everything from daylight that can be rendered uh, on, a, on a map. I like to think of these like all like the renderable features. So we aren't going to include complex relations, but anything that would be rendered on a, on a base map, these are all buildings, roads, um, et cetera, no turn restrictions. Um, and we're going to calculate per object, you know, first the actual geometry, right? We're just going to put that right in the object. No more referencing nodes, uh, just solve that problem right up front. Uh, calculate the bounding box. The zoom level 15 quad key of the feature uh, can be very helpful for segmenting that data later. Um, and then we're also going to, because we have the geometry there, uh, we'll calculate the length if it's a line string or the area uh, if it's a polygon. And then we write all these out as parquet files to the registry of open data on AWS. So daylight is part of the open data uh, registry on Amazon Web Services. Um, and we do this again for each of the uh, distributions of daylight. So we have this monthly or this four week cadence. So again, we are at uh, version uh, 1.16. So to see what that looks like, here's our building today. Um, and this is what we see in OSM. And we're just going to take this and expand a couple of these features. We're going to uh, embed the geometry right there as WKT. We are going to calculate the area at about 5,400 square meters. Uh, there's the zoom level 15 quad key. You can find us here in the north of Florence. And then we also have kind of the envelope, the bounding box uh, shown there. So let's do an example. Because this data is on AWS in these parquet files, we can just use uh, Amazon Athena. We can point Amazon Athena uh, right at uh, the daylight distribution. We're not downloading in these files. We're just pointing it to the files on S3. And we can build these tables and, uh, and just run these queries directly in the browser. So the simplest thing we could we kind of do here is let's count all the buildings uh, in the latest version of daylight. And we get a result of about 517 million. Uh, this took about 10 seconds to run for the whole planet. Um, you can do the same thing on tag info, right? That's maybe not that impressive. Uh, but it's interesting to note here that we see uh, tag info earlier this month reported 523 million buildings. So daylight was short about 6 million buildings. Um, I ran a very similar query to this, but grouped by day. And we're doing an average since 2020 uh, is about 200,000 buildings per day uh, in OSM. Uh, which is uh, 6 million buildings per month. So that kind of explains that, uh, that lag there where we take that snapshot at the beginning of the month, um, do the daylight process, and that's why we're going to be a little bit behind there. So, so far, um, it, all looks, it all looks good. Okay, so that's how many buildings there are, but now let's throw some spatial information into this. Uh, we compute the quad keys um, so that you don't have to uh, do spatial operations. We can just group by quad key, for example. So we'll take a substring of the quad key, uh, in this case, we'll take zoom level seven, uh, so we have kind of this larger analysis area. And we'll do the same thing. We're just going to count the buildings, group by quad key. And we see something like this. Um, and this looks like kind of the OSM kind of data accounts that we would, that we would expect. Uh, we see here, you know, obviously uh, high building density uh, or high building counts in, in Europe and some other global, uh, major global cities, as well as some areas where we know um, there's been a lot of hot tasks. So we're going to come back to, to kind of this map in a second, but I want to show you some other features. Um, we can use just geospatial boundaries. Athena does support geospatial queries. So we can just go ahead. Here's a bounding box around Puerto Rico, and we can just drop this right into the query here. In this case, we'll just uh, count the total or sum up the total number of uh, meters or kilometers of roads uh, by their highway tag here in, in Puerto Rico using that pre-computed length uh, feature. So we run this query. 
And we see about 22,000 uh, total kilometers of residential uh, road in, in Puerto Rico. Um, and we kind of see the rest of the, the highway tags there. So uh, that's, that's counting them. But then if we change this query slightly here, where we're not grouping anymore, we can just download the CSV. So if you run Athena, um, what you're going to get is just a, a, a CSV file. Um, and here we're just extracting the geometries for all of the roads in Puerto Rico. This turns out to be like 166,000 rows. And we just download that, load it right to QGIS, and there's a way to extract all the roads for, for Puerto Rico. You can imagine you can do this for buildings, amenities, um, whatever, whatever tags you want to search for. So the neat thing about having this on AWS as part of the Registry of Open Data is that we can easily incorporate other data sets that are present. So OSM has actually been on the Registry of Open Data since about 2017. Uh, and so in this case, we can join our data to the change sets uh, data already on AWS. So we can, we can go look at the change sets table, and here we're counting uh, or looking for change sets where the comment includes like a hot OSM uh, tag. So now we've taken that same kind of building count that we did and joined it on those change sets where we had the hot OSM tag. And uh, this kind of three-dimensional map here, uh, each of these tiles, uh, as shown kind of the, by the columns, um, represents the number of buildings, the, that same count that we were looking at before. So we see, we see Europe um, is then uh, mostly blue here, um, and then, but we see a lot of kind of, of high building counts. Um, and what this is showing is the percentage of the buildings that were last edited in a uh, change set that had a hot OSM hashtag. So we see areas where hot has been more active. Um, and yeah, I just think this is kind of a, a neat way to, to show uh, the buildings, just both the quantity of them and then uh, the types of tasks that they've been uh, created in. And again, this was all just calculated on the fly right there in the browser, downloaded the CSV, threw it into Kepler GL, and we can get a visualization like this. So let's go back to, let's stick on this buildings thing here. Um, this is the same map as before, but this time we're also counting the area of the tile and getting a building density, uh, which is buildings per square kilometer in this case, um, and then kind of visualizing this. So uh, kind of same distribution pattern we would expect, but maybe a little bit more accurate and, and scientifically rigorous uh, now that we can actually compare like our northern latitudes to stuff around the equator um, because of our uh, Web Mercator projection here. Um, but density doesn't tell us anything about building completeness in OSM. Building completeness also depends on population uh, and where, where there are people in buildings. Um, so we can also compare it to another open data set uh, on AWS, the high resolution settlement layer. So we load this data also into Athena, um, calculate uh, uh, population per, uh, per tile, and then just join back to our uh, building counts or our building density. And now on the top, we have our original building density, and this is buildings per kilometer. Uh, and then on the bottom here, we have our OSM buildings per kilometer squared per person. So we see some really subtle differences here, but this is really important for our quality uh, quality analysis for, say, OSM building completeness. So we see that the USA now appears with a much higher coverage overall. Um, this is because we've taken a lot of that Midwest. We don't have a lot of people and accounted for that where we don't have as many buildings. Um, Eastern Africa, Nepal, Philippines, these areas all go down in kind of this completeness measure here because now we're incorporating a more dense population. And so we're kind of more accurately accounting for the building, uh, building completeness there. Uh, majority of Europe is still very complete. We've also accounted for uh, more northern, northern Europe um, here showing kind of more, more in red. So the point I want to drive home here is that this analysis ready daily distribution really enables this kind of scalable analysis of OSM data all right there in the cloud. Um, this is certainly not the first global OSM building density versus population assessment. Um, there's nothing too novel about that per se. Uh, but I do think this is the first one to run in just a few minutes across the entire globe uh, with really just a few dozen lines of, uh, of SQL uh, code there to, to join these data sets and run this and run this analysis. So we just see this as yet again another way to expand uh, this OSM data science toolkit that I think we've all been kind of developing for the past couple of years.
Yeah, great. So now let's talk about some of the advantages and current limitations of ARD OSM. So some pre-analysis workflows may require um, OSM elements to be converted from nodes, ways, and relations into more common geospatial geometries, such as points, lines, and polygons. Within ARD OSM, this work is already done um, for us and is publicly made available. A uh, second, uh, ARD OSM utilizes basic knowledge of SQL to conduct analysis quickly and cost effectively. This is demonstrated in today's presentation. So instead of downloading the entire planet file, we can now query for our areas of interest and also specific categories as well within a few lines of a SQL. Uh, finally, ARD OSM is interoperable in the sense that we're not necessarily locked into AWS, although that's where it currently lives. Um, because the data is downloaded as Apache Parquet files, we could potentially expand this into other cloud-based uh, databases. Now, uh, for current limitations. So, ARD OSM is currently not suitable for historical data analysis. However, and I think this is a really great however, there are other awesome tools such as OSM, which um, has an amazing community surrounding it, where you can do historical analysis. Uh, with that being said, I'd like to propose some exploratory questions for the audience. Um, the first question is around research and innovation. For example, there was a paper published by Niranjan at all 2022 in Nature, and this paper focused on critical infrastructure, uh, specifically using OSM data to assess critical infrastructure. Uh, a part of the methods for this paper required the authors to download the entire planet file, segment the data, extract the data, um, and then convert that data into geotest in order to create the index for the analysis. The extraction process uh, used over 700 lines of code. With the ARD OSM, um, we can do a part of this extraction process with just like a few lines of code, uh, a few lines of SQL. Second, uh, the question about cloud-based database technology. So as mentioned as one of the current advantages, um, ARD OSM is not locked into AWS. And so we can think about other ways we can expand OSM data through other cloud-based technologies. And finally, um, about the current limitation, which is about uh, historical analysis. It's important for us to think about what are some of the advantages of creating a pre-completed history versus already using a tool that has really great support around it, like OSM. Um, in conclusion, ARD OSM helps lower barriers to entry for other researchers, especially those of us in geospatial technologies and geographic information science at large, um, to increase data accessibility. So we're providing a way to utilize um, OS and data in a readily accessible way. Um, and through ARD OSM, it helps reduce the heavy lift of data engineering. And we would like to emphasize that ARD OSM is not a one size fits all tool. Uh, this tool should live in harmony with other OSM tools such as OSM. Um, and most importantly, we no longer have to download and process the entire planet file. And we're hoping that ARD OSM could be seen as a geospatial backbone for other tools to be built upon um, to connect OSM data in more innovative and meaningful ways. Uh, thank you. Thank you. So I see some questions coming through Venueless. I just remind you, you can also vote the questions. So I will, of course, ask first those who got more votes. Let me start from the first one that was also the one with some votes. Great initiative and tool. Have you considered to have specific hands-on workshops on its use to facilitate its spread? Yes, I'd love to. Um, yeah, I think I'm actually going to, we're going to speak um, at the uh, the map, I think it's the Mappy, uh, social, Mappy Hour social events that I know OSM US has been hosting uh, monthly. Um, I think we're going to start by speaking about this there as well. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd love to host more more workshops and, and stuff. So, yes. Good. More difficult one. You said that you are checking for bad data, but then you stated that daylight includes machine learning data, which is unvalidated. 
so it shouldn't be used to research analysis on data quality or other aspects. How does this go together? Um, yes, so uh, daylight, um, the machine learning data, uh, daylight does not, the, the the daylight distribution, the daylight PBF, uh, daylight planet PBF does not actually include the raw machine learning data. It's only the data that's been validated and imported into OSM. Um, if it came through through rapid, um, it, it was initially that those ML experimental roads, um, that's the machine, the machine learning roads, and those have been then validated and accepted by a person. Um, and then they're into OSM. So the daylight features that we're talking about here in the analysis ready version uh, is just what's in OSM, uh, which includes data that has come from machine learning, but has gone through the human in the loop process uh, to actually get it into OSM. Okay. I hope this uh, answers the question clearly. Could you include other information? For example, how many users have edited the feature or even what users? Ah, so um, yes, that information is is technically in there. Uh, if you if you join to the change sets, you can get the history of what the users who the users were uh, or who the users are that rather last edited the feature. Uh, the daylight distribution is the current version of the planet. So if you're looking to do OSM analysis, I think it's some. If you want to look at the number of users who have ever uh, edited an object you are going to want to use a tool that's going to allow uh, history because we want to have that rich history of how many users have actually touched an object or edited in an area. Um, so for that, you would want to use something that includes all of uh, OSM history, which is not uh, the, the analysis right distribution at this at this point. Um, but tools like OSOM or, or something would be better. We still have questions, so I'll go for another one. What is the si what side is the set of Parquet files? Uh, is it possible to download regional country level parquet files? This is something uh, that we definitely thought about. We haven't done this yet because we haven't had the haven't had a, a need to yet. But I think that that is uh, one thing we could do is uh, if we were to partition the data right now, we have it partitioned by release. Um, we could partition it by country as well and allow people to uh, to download those regions. So if people would like would like that, that's something we can definitely uh, look into if there's an analysis uh, need. Thank you. So this is a quick one. Hopefully also question, uh, the answer is uh, quick. I understand currently the data is on a monthly basis. Is there a plan to provide more real-time data? Again, at this point for data analysis, uh, I think that that's a little bit out of scope for what Daylight uh, tries, to, tries to do, or the, the analysis ready daylight distribution um, would not necessarily be for, uh, for real-time uh, OSM analysis. We have a last one, so please be quick in the answer. Building completeness is considering buildings per person. How about commercial and industrial buildings? Uh, did you consider this? Uh, no, did not consider that in this kind of initial overview. I think that is a really good point. I think at a global summary uh, level like that, at Zoom level seven tiles, I think that that um, is accurate enough for kind of that overview. Um, but that is also something that you could definitely filter for very easily uh, in such an analysis. Thank you again, Jennings and Timera. Just I want to say that um, in Jennings is the only person that uh, presented it in all five editions of the track. So <laughs> it wouldn't be a track without Jennings. Thanks. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs>